video starting. And we go on live. In five, and four, and three. We live, baby. That's legendary. 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 <laughs> Yeah, y'all yeah, um. actually won a, um, an award, um, the Boss Max 2009 Ohio Hip Hop Award. Y'all won for that media outlet thing. Man, I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> like y'all won. <laughs> he didn't even know he won. <laughs> nah. What you say? Who was it? <laughs> you won the Boss Magazine 2009 Ohio Hip Hop Award. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> That's legendary. That's legendary. That's legendary. That's legendary. That's legendary. You in there? Yeah, hey, what's good, it's your boy Peanut, aka Dash. Reach store my man Snack and Smith. What's cracking? What's cracking? What's cracking? Everybody, hold on, I need to take this damn hat off. <laughs> <laughs> Set the tone. There you yeah, go. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, what's going on, bro? This your boy Smith. Uh, T-shirt kings go for your mouth, and we wanted to just give a shout out to Agnes All Natural Grill, Sheik's Best Breakfast in the City, and if you ever get injured. Uh, call my bro, attorney Michael Wright at 937-222-7477, Legendary People Podcast. We're in the building. Uh, one other thing, you guys, this week, man, we're going to be going crazy on the um, on the podcast. Tomorrow we got Marlon Shackelford. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wednesday I got Peerless Price, Woo! which is major NFL, big dog, played with Michael Vick and mm -hmm. Peyton Manning, so yeah. he played with some real Hall of Famers. Then we got Greg Yoloho. On Thursday, from mm -hmm. the Yoloho Wire Wheels. And for the He's birthday? Real, real balling. And then Dollar Bill on his birthday. We're going to bring Dollar Bill's birthday in with him right here. That's crazy. On Legendary uh -oh. People Podcast yeah. on Friday night, <laughs> man. So we got a crazy week, but we're going to get it popping today. Today. Right now, man, my bro, Peanut Johnson. Man, what do we got, bro? Man, listen, man. I know I say I got legendary guests here all the time. I, I say it every single time. I always try to stack it up higher, 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 but nothing goes higher than this one because at here at Legendary People Podcast, we have legendary people and legendary stories. Without further ado, we have Don from Raise the Bar. Hey, hey. With the, you know what I'm saying? The studio management and all that. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing fine. You look beautiful, by the way. Thank you. you. Thank you. So, so here at the Legendary People Podcast, we honor our legends by off giving them, you know, we got to find their origins. So without further ado, where'd you grow up at? Uh, mostly Troutwood, mm -hmm. a lot of Dayton. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, coincidentally, mostly down the street from the Troutman studio. Okay. Which was my obsession oh, growing wow. up. You know, every time we get ready to turn and go down Salem, that was... I mean, I was just sure if I just stared at that place, I would see something magic happen. Yeah. It, I never saw anything, though. <laughs> right. But, I mean, it, it, it manifested later. Mm -hmm. We'll just say that. But, um, yep, so, do you, yeah, trot wood until, you know, junior high, high school, then I was in Dayton. Mm -hmm. um, not anything real exciting about that. Well, uh, so, like, what kind of thing did you do when we was around that area? I mean. Um, well, you know, I was was a only child, oh. latchkey kid. Mm -hmm. um, my mom worked a lot, so I was at home, and I was supposed to stay in the house, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't answer the phone. Don't. <laughs> so music was my everything, mm -hmm. my literal everything. Um, and, you know, in those days, they actually – played music videos on TV. Mm. So that, that I watched music videos all all day. Probably okay. should have been doing homework, but no. Um, <laughs> you know, just just music was my way of survival. Okay. So, so were there any um, influences that like you like from the city at that time or was it just mainly like mainstream music during that time? Um, I would say honestly it was mainstream, although um, again um, at that point, I didn't know our history as far as the Ohio players and that kind of thing, but um, Roger, the Troutmans, mm -hmm. Shirley Murdoch, I was like, we, I, we have greatness, and it's just down the road for me. How right. is this even possible? Right. But, um, but yeah, I, I really wasn't too aware at a young age of the local music scene, mm -hmm. but when I say young, we're talking, you know, and right. whatnot. Right. Say that real quiet, the 80s. <laughs> I mean, so. to put it in proper perspective, when you were 15, you were wearing cross-color outfits, right? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. 
<laughs> okay, a lot of bitch. Yeah, like, I, I mean, saw pictures. That's why I said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Like, so yeah, you're you super, trip. super duper prepared. Yes, yeah. I yeah. I I did, and I worked about in about every store in the Salem Mall that mm-hmm. there was, mm-hmm. mostly gym shoe stores. But you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had it. I had it all. Was, I was you there when Ice T punched the guy in the Foot Locker? <laughs> no, unfortunately, I missed that. <laughs> right. Yeah, <I'm> <laughs> Ice T punched somebody with East Town Posse, man, and escaped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that was total one of our stories there. That that almost doesn't surprise me. Right. So um so like during this time, I mean, um what uh elementary school did you go to? Um I went to uh Madison Park and then Broadmore. Mm-hmm. So So um then um so so you kinda are you doing anything with school with music or anything like that, talent show, anything not, like that? Not just... a not a damn thing. Right. I tried to play the flute for a little bit. <laughs> I didn't work. Um I have zero musical talent, literally. The the only talent I have now, and I really believe it's been developed over years in the studio, is I have a really good ear for a good mix, a bad mix, a good, you know, all of that. But could I make it either of those things? Hell no. Right. So. <laughs> so um, eventually you go to CJ. Yes. Right. So like what? Good Lord. <laughs> You could you could write my biography right now. Pretty much. <laughs> so so like what's so what's CJ like going from you know going from public Madison school to, yeah. to um whew, well what? oh yeah 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 it it was tough mm-hmm. it was tough um I went from being a straight A student to being way far behind yeah and unfortunately also being a teenager at that I was like well fuck it then right. <laughs> I'll pass, Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, my mind was really outside of school at that point Mm -hmm. and probably trying to be more grown up than I should have. Absolutely. Uh, Something that we normally like to do on the podcast is we like to hear, like, like at least who were some of your friends? Coming yeah. up, early That's elementary, going into middle school. Who were some of the people? I got that a picture with you, with you and your friend with the salt and pepper looking outfit. Like y'all was like you had chains on, had to sleeves on. Um. Well, I the who who I was closest with, who I kicked it with the most, who I was in clubs I shouldn't have been with. Uh, the Maximilians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you impressed yes. already? I promise. You I know. I no. It's all true. I'm not ashamed. Yeah. Just surprised. I mean, you know, these days you say Maximilians to somebody, and they're like, "What the fuck are you Max talking Max about?" Yeah. Um, yeah. So my little crew was uh, uh, some people I need to catch up with. Tanya. Um, Tanya Morgan. Do you know her? No. I just okay, you just <laughs> read. I was gonna say, damn. What? Um, and uh, Reniquia Hughes. We we were tight. We we kicked it. We got into a lot of things. Um, um it's one story that I, I did want to hear about. It was a story that um, you kind of didn't tell the story out of the way. Uh, it was about your friend's car was involved, involved in a crime scene. Are you psychic? <laughs> <laughs> yes, my friend. My wow. My friend Tanya, she she um she was a little bit older than us. She was at uh, Maximilian's probably a little more often than we were, and um, yeah, somebody got shot and landed on it, and it was it was held yeah. up for a few days, you know. I'm gonna say the craziest part about that story was Dre Measy on that post talking about, oh, it must have been that one night that somebody got shot through the wall. She's like, nah, it was another night. <laughs> I'm like, y'all were going to clubs like that when people die, like literally. Yeah, man, that's weird. But anyway, so <laughs> yeah, so I, I yeah, so so you were part of the early hip hop scene. So so for people thinking that maybe she wasn't, she just pulled up out of nowhere. She was outside. Yeah, that that's <laughs> that's a common misconception. Like, oh, you must be from Centerville. You must be from no Leland and Westwood. <laughs> I can't stand you. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we yeah we were and we were right by Mees. Matter of mm-hmm. fact, mm-hmm. Uh, Dre Mees. I, I don't even want to give out his business, but yeah, I mean, he talking about the garage. Well, he no, he he uh, as a kid had mm-hmm. had a crush on one of one of my friends even before. We, uh. you know, I mean, because they all grew up right there, mm-hmm. so yeah. 
So <laughs> Westwood Connection, that's that's what it what is. What was it like meeting them early in their career compared to where they are now? Me? Yeah. Um, I have to be honest, I did I met Mies through Mo, so it was later. I mean, I feel like I got into the music scene late. I feel like I missed out on a, a lot of really great things because I didn't get into the music scene until I was probably 26, 27. Okay, well, we're not going to rush there yet because it's okay. going to be a little more of your voice, I'm so. scared. Go ahead. So, so, um, so, so you still kind of ha- have friends that are running around dating and having fun and Absolutely. you still got to go be in Catholic school and do everything right. Is that kind of like a... Kind of like a guilty pleasure kind of thing, like where you got to be at school and be all super. No, because I was checked out of school, okay. just to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I hope my kids don't watch this. No, it's a learning <laughs> experience for everybody. But, yeah, no, um, I, w- I was checked out. Um, so. I did what I needed to do mm-hmm. to graduate, but that was it. Right. Um, I mean, I did go to college and get my shit together then, but um, high school now, one thing I was like, you know, it was such a culture shock as mm. far as, you know, like I said, I was a good student. Mm, not anymore. Right. Uh, when did you and, say it was a culture shock? Come on, break that down a little bit for us. I just didn't feel like I felt, I didn't feel like I fit in. Mm. Huh. Because of? A lot of those students just had a different experience growing up, and they were. You thought they what they had money compared to. Well, they did. Huh? A lot of them did. They did. Okay. Yeah. Um. I tended to gravitate gravitate more towards people that that I felt like I had some in common in with. Right. And I mean, I think that's natural. For sure. It just um. Yeah, I I checked out. I thought I was grown, mm-hmm. like a lot of us did at that age, but you know, I had a lot to learn still. So, Mo Beats, um, he went to Colonel White. Yes. Right. So, mm-hmm. at what part do y'all uh, cross paths? Is this Not, uh, before or after Rice State? Uh, much, <laughs> I don't want to say much after. Yeah, pretty much much after. Now, mm-hmm. now Mo, on the other hand, was was a good student and, and an athlete and, you know, yeah, like wrestling. So wrestling, like soccer. He loved, which ironically, our kids, that ended up being their sport. So that Absolutely. was a blessing that I can't even explain. But, yeah, no, he was the, he was the good kid. Right. <laughs> um, are, are there any uh, five members he told you about his growing up that, that like, you remember? Like Oh, I, so many. So many. He, um, his parents were just... A, you know, amazing people. He, and you could tell it Mm -hmm. by meeting him that his parents were older. Mm -hmm. And that's something that he got made fun of for and all of that. But you, the man that they raised, the character that they gave him, Mm -hmm. you know. it, It was polished. It was, I you know, it's, to say he was an old soul is an understatement. Right. And, um, I mean, his parents were, I think his, and I'm mad that I can't remember the exact age, but his dad was nearly 50 when he was born. I think he was 46, 47, and his mom was 44. Well, um, I'm going to do one of Mo's legendary quotes. He spoke spoke on his father. He said, my father taught me how to use my head and my heart, how to meet a stranger, how to provide for my family, how to work more than worry, how to finish what I start how to clean up my messes, how to face my fears, how to tell the truth, how to smile, how to share, how to teach. And I hope to be just like, that's yeah. one of the quotes by the way. Nice. And, and he was. Um, yeah, he, I, I didn't have the pleasure of meeting either of his parents because his father passed away when he was 17. Mm-hmm. His mom passed away when he was 23. Um, but I felt like I knew him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I felt like they were the boy's grandparents because he was always passing down those lessons, mm. always. Um, and it just showed so much in his character, um, you know, the 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 man they created. Mm. But it was also difficult him, for him because they were both in very poor health. Mm-hmm. Um, he had an older sister, but she had some issues of her own, so it all fell on him. 
So he was very much a caretaker. I like <laughs> he t- he told me when we were first friends slash dating. I don't know. We were somewhere <laughs> in the middle. We were supposed to just be friends. That he would never be in a relationship with a woman with bad health. And I'm like, what? <laughs> That's that. <laughs> But, you know, when it came down to it and I started having issues and had to have back surgery, I couldn't have asked for a, someone to support me more. Mm-hmm. Absolutely couldn't have. And he learned that, you know, from caretaking with his parents. Right. So, which, which is still rough for a kid. But right. So, um, can you walk us through the day y'all met? <laughs> I mean, it's more complicated than that because I started music as um, a manager. And I'm going to use that in quotes because I didn't know what the hell I was doing at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, What kind of led you to there? um, Well, first of all, I discovered that there were people making music in the area. And I I didn't, you know. Now, it first really came into my mind when um, it's actually at Britney 2's. And uh, who was it that walked in? It was um, DBM. Mm-hmm. It was Dante D Boy mm-hmm. walked in, and the reaction they got, and I'm like, okay, okay, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. There's, there's, some, there's something going on. I mean, of course, <laughs> I heard chaos. I mean, who did? Yeah. Right. But I'm like, there's something going on here. I need to, I need to check closer. Right. Yeah. Um, I did miss some time in my early 20s because my kids were small and I was not about to be out. You right. know, I just wasn't. Respectful. So when I saw that, I'm like, okay, I got to figure this out because I may not be able to do anything that requires musical talent, but I know how to build a business. Mm-hmm. And even at that point, I recognized that being an artist is being a business. Mm-hmm. So um, I started trying to, to play with the artist management thing. I had a lot to learn. <laughs> and Mo and I actually, I, I, MySpace had just come out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, MySpace era. <laughs> MySpace had just come out. And, you know, I, I kind of approached Mo because he was, he was a pro. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, I, I'm working with this artist, and, you know, what do you think? Who was and, the artist, you, you don't mind? Just me, I mean, some light. I mean, it's a, yeah. uh, He went by Black Cat at okay, the time. Black Cat. Um, Black Cat? Yes. Black Cat, okay. Yep. So, Shout out to Black Cat wherever you are. <laughs> Black Cat. Who yeah. is Black Cat? Man? It's her first artist. I mean, I know, he saying, might have changed his name to like Black Cat. Black to somebody Cat. famous, you know what I mean? Shout out to Black Cat. We're, we're just gonna keep it rolling on that one. I'm gonna do research on that. Oh God, we, I'm you just, probably have. I'm just kidding. I'm no, just no, kidding. you, you probably. <laughs> Shoot, is our MySpace pages even still up? Yes. Oh, fuck. Are they? Yes. Wow. Sometimes I got to get greasy and go down there, bro. I ain't going to lie. I, I, should, like I shouldn't have even brought that up. I, I, I've already been down there. Well, was, I've already been was, down there. Was, <laughs> was, Black, was Black Cat talented? Could he? Did he have uh, skill? Yeah. This is going to sound like a really odd answer, but I'm going to be completely honest. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. And the reason I say that is because from where I was then to where I am now Mm -hmm. is a completely different year. Yeah. A completely different year. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're, you know, you start often, I think a lot of us start dealing with artists that we have relationships with outside of music. Yeah. So we're not. um, Objective. At all. That's a good point. So I'm not saying no. But I am saying that I haven't heard it in a decade and a half, and I have no idea. Yeah. I want to draw a weird parallel here because he had a record label one time management. And uh, uh-huh. who was your first artist? Uh, Lil Urban Blackjack. <laughs> so mm-hmm. Lil Urban Blackjack and Black Cat. Uh, it's not like a group all together. All Lil, Urban. <laughs> Lil Urban yeah. Blackjack hardest. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, bro. I shot the Ink God, man. man I they yeah. look crazy. They were, Denison, yeah. They they got the juice, man, all day, man. Yeah. Shout out to my little brother. Well, I I started much more humbly than that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But 
I, I just I just wanted to learn. Mm-hmm. I wanted to learn everything I could. And that was something that, that Mo immediately picked up on. Mm-hmm. Um, so we really just started as... So let's uh, do MySpace. It wasn't face-to-face? Not yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so their conversation back and forth, it was really... We really started as friends and just instantly connected. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just... I had questions. I had so many questions. And being the type of man he was, he's like, this is a person that really wants to learn. Mm-hmm. I'm going to help because that's what he always did. Mm-hmm. He he felt that if you have a gift, it's your God-given responsibility to share that gift. Mm-hmm. So he, you know, he knew I was really interested in learning and was happy to teach. So and then we exchanged phone numbers, had a, a lot of really long phone calls, music related, um, and then. We met in person at Santana's. At Santa's? That will, that, that cannot be the same night that I talked to Mo. Remember we talked off camera and I t- said like, like I I remember recording with him and then mm-hmm. the first time I seen him was at Santana. Um, that is crazy. Who, who was about. there right now? Esquire. Esquire. But Esquire was always there. So yeah. it, uh, I want to say. How often did Mo go? Oh. To Santana's? Yeah. All the all, time. Yeah, all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. All the time. He was there all the time. Mm-hmm. But, like Mo's an OG. That wasn't the night. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was spoiler. There, there, there is that a lot the of nights. Night, so. <laughs> right. so, so. I'm trying to remember that somebody. Who was it? Who was the other artist? Esquire promoted it. Uh, Peter Problem. Shout no, out Peter Problem. It, it, it wasn't Adam him. Side. It wasn't him. Uh, um, was it a painted popular? What, what was it where? No, it actually wasn't. I think it was like a Tuesday. It was okay, a, Tuesday. It has been open mic. I mean, if, well, no, because no, Monday, it wasn't Monday an was open, open mic. Mics. No, I lied. I lied. I think it was right around Thanksgiving, and it was either. I think it was a Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I oh. lied. That's. What, oh yeah, it, it was that night, bro. What? It was. I can't remember <laughs> who the heck. <laughs> It cannot be that day. I don't. I don't Might do as you well. Re- you know what? It was that day, bro. What the? <laughs> the day you and Mo met is the, the same same. day. He but what was? Who was the artist? There was. Yes, a- it was. No, it's not. Let's just give it to what? It's Listen, not the same. We have a chance to make this a special day. <laughs> Why not do it? But there was another artist. There was an artist performing. I cannot think of who it was. Wait, Uh-oh. I know who it was. There we go. Elmar. Oh, Elmar, right? El- Elmar, yeah. It, it, what is, see, he couldn't wait. See, he, he trying to catch me. So I just wanted to be a good day. It, 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 that, I mean, to me, it, it still it still could have been the same thing. But yeah, like so, so like you go in there, get, get you to see the new talent. What was it like? I mean, like did you kind of fold into this, to sitting there observing? Or you yeah, more? it was that I was with a, a couple girlfriends. Um, and he was coming down there anywhere and it was like it's about time we met in person we've mm-hmm. talked for hours and hours so on the phone yeah yeah well, y'all was down there catfishing each other but y'all was just the real people <laughs> what <laughs> that's a weird yeah. turn <laughs> well, on the phone and they never met oh well yeah, yeah. It's true I, true I, I but i never thought it like yeah that. back then <laughs> I'm sure they were doing it, but we didn't really, you know. But nah, y'all, you knew Mo was a real person from all this. Work I, absolutely. I mean, I knew his accomplishments. <laughs> I, I have respect for him. I'm not I, thinking I, that weird turn. You just, I guess I could have been. It. But it wasn't a situation where let's hook up or let's date. Right. It was yeah. a legitimate friendship. And it was actually a really good friendship for a long time. People didn't believe it was a friendship. But I right. guess they were sensing what we were not nah, they could kind of feel y'all's vibe kind of that that momentum of energy you guys was having towards so approximately around what year is this oh seven i okay. want to say seven, okay yeah. so, well 2007 was the uh was ohio hip-hop awards it, uh, it was it was part of it yeah mm-hmm. because you know not to skip ahead but we ended up being a uh, staff for ohio hip-hop awards Absolutely. so um oh seven i it was really starting to gain momentum then but Okay, so the last one was 2017, and that was year 12. So I don't do math well. It started 2005. It, uh, it started 2005, and then 2007 was when I saw y'all two at the Hip Hop Awards together. Probably. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. 
So, all these years blur together. Don't they, yeah. though? Yes, they so, do. um, it, it's one thing I could not find at all, and it was where the inception of Raise the Bar start. Oh, well, that that's before me. Yeah. Now, I'm sure you have to know. Mm-hmm. Well, I know Mitch and them had a yeah, huge, so, yeah, like they're co-founders of it. I just didn't see an imprint of exactly when it started. Um, shoot, I just looked at the year and now I can't remember it. It was, it was Mitch, come early. Sit down, sir. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can harass yeah. Mitch if you want him here and Skano because yeah. that's just what it should be. <laughs> but um, early two thousands, but don't quote me on that. Mm. It um it was before me, but the the concept and the the branding on it was, in my opinion, genius because it was a one stop shop mm-hmm. for all the creative services that someone in the entertainment business needed. Right. Yeah. You need a website, we got somebody. Mm-hmm. You need a DJ, we got somebody. You need a photographer, you need a studio. Graphics too. Gra- yeah, yeah, they yeah. they that and the brand of raise the bar as in raising the bar in quality and that's what we're all about to to this day i would be disrespectful if i continued the studio and didn't keep that standard yeah so raise the bar branched out into a lot of things now when i met mo the most i knew about raise the bar was the calendars what (laughs) The, I, I, right I, the calendars, calendars. yes. Okay, okay. So you don't know about the pool party or nothing like that? Uh, somewhat. Uh, what, but what's the calendars? Are you serious? No, tell me. Serious. No, the, well, even if cal- I know, everybody else might not. So <laughs> there you go. See that? But <laughs> see, <laughs> what, what you don't know is that when, later on, you know, especially when I first started dating, it'd be like, she wanted to raise the bar girls? I know. Mm. I love those girls. They're just so much, but no. Yeah. I I I don't even like my picture taken. Mm. So um, yeah. So that raised the bar started with that, and the the calendars they um, they sold well. Yeah. yeah. They sold real well. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they they really did some good things too with 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 the modeling team and traveling around and and you know promotions for different products and, and all that and every now and then I go should I try that again and then I go mm, no yeah <laughs> cuz I've already you know that's one of gift and curse things it can go really really good and it can go really really stressful but so raise the bar originally started with that mm. Now, um, Mo was at, he started at what became the lab in 1996. Mm -hmm. Um, He basically went in, it was a a professional recording studio. He went and said, what would it cost to master this? Um, The owner sat down with him, listened to his mix, said, you know, you you got something here. And he started as an intern and didn't leave until we moved to Dixie. Wow. So he was there from 1996 to 2012. So is that with mm-hmm. formal training at all or is that just raw talent of him just learning, just having the ear for it and fine tuning it himself? Um, I think he would say both, but formal training, no. Mm-hmm. Um, some good mentors, absolutely yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but mostly self-trained. But when when he took his uh, I don't know if it was a single or a project, honestly, to, to get mastered there. You know, the owner said, you got something here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he started there and, you know, the. <laughs> he oh. went there to get his stuff mastered and ended up mastering other people's stuff. They like, hold on, who makes this? Right. He said, I did. They said, wait a minute, you come and work here. Or mm-hmm. you come and engineer intern. here, In- yeah. intern here. Yeah, yeah. start as an intern, but I, I don't believe that lasted long. So what? Right. So, so Mo made music like besides. Like, oh like, no like, no no! Mo was a rapper first. What? Yeah. Well, let's get into that. Let's get into that. So so I mean, did you ever hear him like freestyle or rapping or stuff like that? Uh, in real time, no. Never. Um, I saw some videos. Like he was, he he didn't share that stuff with me. It was his people that would be like, "Hey, you need to see this." Yeah. <laughs> and he was so in it. He was so young. I'm talking early 20s teens mm-hmm. i barely recognized his voice he was like a whole different i'm like are you sure that's you i don't 
I don't know, you're, you know, so he was a rapper first. Mm -hmm. And then um, started producing, making beats, and that took over. And what then, was his rap name? <laughs> it could have been more beats because that's where it makes stuff down. You know, I'm not sure. <laughs> that's a tough one. I'm actually. I drink me if you know, type, type it in the. Uh, no, I, 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 I know who to check with on that, but. Yeah. Um, the fact that I don't know that, I don't, I don't recall. All, I caught you. That's all good. No, I've literally seen um, one video, mm -hmm. and then I have one cassette tape that I'm afraid, well, I don't have anything to play it on. But even if I did, I'd be afraid to tape, to play it because it'll snap. Yeah. It's so old. Wow. But I, I would, I'm not sure if I kind of think that my bros kicked it like a, a long time ago, back in the day. But um, you got Mo Beats and then also I Kill. Yeah, he would he would be a kills hype man. Yeah, out of necessity. So, yeah, and wow. then also because he discovered a kill. And then wow. also rhyming man. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. I kind of always thought that they was bros, like they was cool. Yeah, you know I didn't. I didn't. Rhyming meet... man got locked up though. Yeah, I didn't actually talk to him until after Mo passed. Yeah. Right. Oh, but he came through and said that was my that's my dude and all I, that type of stuff. You know, to be honest with you, I can't remember Yeah. if we talked online or we but we talked. Yeah, for sure. I I think he might have been in the studio for real. It's see, it's a Mo, lot to keep track of. Was Mo ever in the Park Hill area? Uh he Park was Dayton View as well. You, Dayton View, Dayton View, Park Hill, um Litchfield because I think sometimes I just get it twisted, but I his his he his parents lived on Shaftesbury and he had a city. Well, Shaftesbury and Park Hill. So Mo stayed down the street from me. Mm -hmm. Me and my brother Flames, we lived on Park Hill for a little while, mm -hmm. and Mo mm -hmm. would be right there. There was a park right there by mm -hmm. that, by that crib, and we would just randomly just chop it up with each other, just as mm -hmm. bros, just just cool talk real quick. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um. Yeah, so I remember all of that kind of like upstart where I was thinking like, oh, dang, do we rap? Or kind of like, do we make beats a little bit? Because I don't think none of us was just like out there. This is when we was young. Mm -hmm. you know, like I was probably 16 or 17 around this time. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Mo was a big bro to me, maybe by a couple of years. Him and Scano about the same age. Scano's just a little bit older. Just, Mo would have turned 51 on the 19th. So right. just... Just a week ago ish. Man, happy birthday, Mo Beats. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Man, good timing for this. But yeah, so Mo was like a big bro. Yeah. Tell me, you know, he was probably like, he probably wasn't ready to talk to me and my little bro <laughs> that much. Right. But he would give us some acknowledgement. Right. Mm -hmm. What's up with us, man? Okay, mm -hmm. go on down somewhere. Go on down the street, dude. But yeah. So, um, so around the 2008, 2009, um, he, uh, he began working with Tyler Entertainment. Yeah, I think that was earlier than that. Oh, earlier than that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah he, that was heavy bef before I was mm -hmm. in the scene. Of course, at that point, he was still working real heavy with DeMarco, though. Yeah, DeMarco 275. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, at that point, 275 had kind of split. Mm -hmm. Snipes, I think he had moved to Atlanta by that yeah. point. Um, but he was working super heavy with, with DeMarco and I mean, that was, that's always, that's family. Mm -hmm. Um, it, Shell Shock, who's in Baton Rouge, mm -hmm. yeah. he was working real heavy with him then. It, it, it feels like the golden era to me cause that's when I got in a real studio and I'm mm -hmm. like, this is the shit. Right. So, um, working real heavy with GTC at that point. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I'm gonna Jason, of course, because yeah. Jason has been going hard since ever. Yes. Yeah, most consistent artist I've seen in my life. Absolutely, yeah. you were outwork. Were you outwork still managing at this time too, Don? Um, I stepped away from it not on purpose, just yeah. because there was nobody that inspired me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, until Dave Speed. Dave Speed. Yeah. Okay. And I'm like. When you manage an artist, I hope this doesn't sound weird, but when you manage an artist, you fall in love with their music. At least I think that's how it should be. Right. You should be pushing it like it's your baby. Yeah. So um, I'll never forget. It was a night 
Joe, the national artist Joe, was at, how was that club? Shit, we could play that game all night. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> the one downtown. And, the one club that used to be named another club, and now it's another club. That yeah, club. that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but we were supposed to be going to see him, we meaning me and some girlfriends. Mo was actually there with Joe, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> but um, we went instead to guess the name of the club we got the club that used to be named a list it was a list so <laughs> yeah so we went to a list house in the building. and that's the first time i saw premium blend dave speed perform mm -hmm. i was like this guy is so talented mm -hmm. so that's when i jumped back in it and i managed to convince mo who said he would never do it again to jump in with me mm. And he literally said, at that point, he was like, that's how you know I love her, because I said I would never do this again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we did some good work with Dave. Mm -hmm. So um, so eventually in 2009 is when y'all go to the studio Moraine. Um, nope. Moraine was 96 to 2012. Okay. So, oh, okay. so, so it, it started like out as FJM. Mm -hmm. um, by the time it got to, to that point, mm -hmm. Mo was the only engineer before there were several. Um, now, um, Mies, Dre Mies. And, and Taiwan were in another room in that, in another studio in that same, yeah. you know, building um, for a good long time. But Mo was basically the only engineer left, but he kept it going. Mm -hmm. um, so he was there until 2012. And what happened was basically the building owner just let the building go. Like, wow. Bathroom didn't work. Oh, no running water. Mm -hmm. um, the HVAC system went. And we we're like, this, you know, this, this is not going to work. And by this time, we're married. We're trying to raise kids. And, you know, so we're like, okay. We got to do something about this. Um, and what we decided to do was we the, we moved to the space we're at now, but we purchased the condo unit because we said we are never going to have another situation where the landlord mm -hmm. can basically ruin our business. Absolutely. And then a studio build is... It took us three months, and I don't want to say how much money to to do that studio build. So we're not we weren't trying to move. So one we're thing like, I liked about that the most was it wasn't just him in there doing it or him by, getting a bunch of contractors. It was him. It was Mitch. It was you. It was your sons. They're literally in there pulling Skano. nails out the wall. Skano in there, yeah. help build, build it. I mean, they my have, dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We so, there's yeah. nothing but love in those walls, mm -hmm. and and I swear people can feel it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's set. They don't say it in that way, but it's just so many people say the energy here is so good. And that's because it was it was all love. Mm -hmm. It was all love. It was a family business to the core. Right. Um, we we all were in there working. Whoa, that was an exhausting three months. Well, yeah. let, let's um let's build on Skano real quick. Skano mm -hmm. and Mo Beats relationship because they was like Bro literally brothers. Yeah. He was literally well, see, the best man at brothers. the wedding. Yeah. He was, and he, here's the only thing. Mo, after a while, started to say, "Skano's not my brother because he's your brother. You too <laughs> much. You two, you two are too much alike, and you know we, that'd be weird if yeah. you know." But no, Skano is. I, I cannot even express the love I have for Skano. Yeah. To this day, he is my biggest supporter. And that is the same thing to me as m any word that he says to me is as if it came out of Mo's mouth. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I need that sometimes. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, Skano was definitely a Mo's best friend, best man, you know, most solid guy you'll ever meet. And just like Mo, you don't ever have to guess where he stands on a topic. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, but like walk us through that day of the wedding. I mean, you had to be nervous, everything like that. Like walk us through the day of the wedding. Um, whew. Uh, it went fast, but it was great. It was really great. Um, the actual ceremony and everything, it just, it was like, 
kind of a blur. I remember the, the um, what you call it, the, you know, when you practice the night before. The, oh, the rehearsal. The rehearsal. I remember that better than, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, we had uh, Kwanzaa, who, um, great, talented um, singer, also one of Mo's close friends that was in Flipside, mm-hmm. which was yeah, one of his Flipside. legendary great Flipside. group. Man. Oh, yeah. I if I had to say, oh God, that'd be I, I don't want to say it, but if I had to say what was his favorite project, that was yeah. He spoke about his, it. Flipside yeah. was a professional, professional singer. Yes, group, man. yes, they, absolutely. They music sound ready and yeah, yeah and he he put his whole foot in every bit of that album yeah he was very proud right. of that like one of the as we were becoming friends and he was teaching me things that was the first thing he did was hand me a flip side cd and say you need to listen to this yeah. now she's, she's down playing her wedding because let, let me tell you how amazing it is right you have the legendary don there yeah marrying the legendary mo yeah behind mo is dj scano right right the maid of honor is Yvette, Dr. Yvette, sorry. Yeah. Um, and if you know Dr. Yvette, well, she was voted Dayton's best, uh, best like celebrity, like best local celebrity in 2015. Wow. Yeah, she, she was my maid of honor. And then her two daughters mm-hmm. were also in the wedding. Um, my two close friends um, also that are not music related, as if that's even a thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, that's the, that's the, one of the best things about music is everyone it that has become our family and still to this day you know now that i'm getting you know older and stuff and the clients are the same age as my kids now i, I got honorary kids that so you know mm-hmm. it's it's family music is family and and that wedding showed that better than anything else right. Because don't forget, Kwanzaa was on the piano. Exactly. Yeah, yeah don't forget. <laughs> that is a star set of it. Oh, and you guys look at the pictures of legendary Dre Measy. <laughs> Who else? Who else? This, this, this is like, this like a crazy, yeah. like, just imagine, like, the sound you're learning from me, like. Yeah. You, you're, you're not even All talking star. about the guest list. Oh, yeah, yeah. All <laughs> star game. But to, the, to us, that's, it's, they mm-hmm. are a family, period. We just happen to have an extremely talented family. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, I mean, we, we can make a quick interjection there. Well, like we spoke about off camera. You know, uh, like for instance, like I'm from the like maybe the second generation hip hop, even more close to the you know what I'm saying, like older generation. You're closer. So, so for me, I always grew up. I ain't trying to send no shot at you. Now, <laughs> I'm not supposed to hear you go. Damn, now I was just a Sugar Hill gang and shit. <laughs> oh, my bad, bro. <laughs> Broken glass everywhere. everywhere. Well, well, you know, you, you see the posts of when did you first fall in love with hip hop? Mm-hmm. Okay, so when did you first fall in love with hip hop? Um, I would have to say uh, Prodigy uh, HMIC album. Prodigy? Yeah. Ooh. Mob D? Prodigy and Mob D HMIC album. I got it from my big brother DeVille. I was a hot boy up until that. Wait, 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 look, look, look. I was a hot boy up until I got that album, and then for me, I threw away my Jabos and put them Oh, no, up. not. I mean, I had those in every color, Mob but. Deep. <laughs> bro, what is wrong with Mob Deep, bro? Well, the, I'm not going to say nothing is wrong with Prodigy Deep, by himself. That shit is just late in the game. It's bro. not late in the game, bro. You got to check it out, bro. Okay, so so what is it for you, Smith? And, and African Bambada? No, I'm I'm gonna confess I'm gonna happily confess mine, so yeah. feel free. Go, go ahead, man. I mean, well Would I'm Jesus go, be the drum? No, no, no. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go run DMC, okay. King of Rock. Right. Uh fat, well it's really sucker MCs for oh, run oh, DMC. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And then but we got Houdini. I mean, that's like fat boys type shit, crush groove, all of that. That's yeah. nineteen eighty three. 182, shit like that. It's in yeah. my deep, man. What's you keep thinking I'm, you keep forgetting I'm a little younger than you, man. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. So, Damn. so, no, well, yeah. You had it. You start listening to hip hop about 91. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, like, I mean, you, like, my brother, like, I remember being there when my brother was crying over Tupac and I. I would remember that happening. Yeah. I didn't have no connection to his music yet. I didn't even understand oh, wow. it like that. Really? Like, I remember it was looking at my brother like he's in a crowd on this dude on TV. It was it was, it was wild to me. 
I remember, remember like yesterday. My, my first oh. memories alive. Yeah. Like, like, right, two two come on, Don. Who you got for me? Yeah, sorry. Um, don't say it no. Was, it was definitely Roxanne, Roxanne, Roxanne UTFO. Shantae. And, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. then. I like the movie, man. I like it. Well, no, the original, the UTFO, yeah. not UTFO, the. UTFO, yeah, bro. Um, and <laughs> I, I, I've had the pleasure of of being around Mixed Master Ice many wow. times now. Mm. He lives in Columbus, what? still yes. DJs. And oh. he is to this day the only person I get totally starstruck in front of. I think I've said six words to him. Mm. Yeah. I, I shook Rakim's hand and spoke to him, but Mixed Master Ice, I, yeah. I, I turned into the third grader I was when I was in love with that song and used to play it over and over and over and Man, over again. Man, Roxanne Shantae. UTFO, all of that type of shit, which is major. That's what I'm talking about. That's real hip hop, man. My beat. <laughs> see that? See that? And that is what keeps getting the younger people to quit valuing y'all opinions. When you start saying, see, that's, that's the real, real, that's the real. No, hip hop you know, is constantly to, changing and moving like a current. This I have current. to agree I with you. Mean, I don't mean that. Yeah, I, right. I, I agree with you completely because the one thing, especially people. <laughs> man? Yeah. He just gave him a point. He just gave him a damn point. Don't ever agree with him, man. No, I have to because I. Man, I wasn't even dis. I wasn't even dis. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Well, we, we got. Maybe it's two different points because the, uh, the, yeah. the mob <laughs> deep think I, I, I can't even uh, connect with that. Me. But there are a lot of people of our generation that say all this hip hop is dead stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Right. No, no it's not. Hip hop, it's not his fault he wasn't born yeah. 10 years before but, I was. But, but I also, also did, did take into account the fact that I was born at the, 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 at the time that I'm in. So I'm not, not the prisoner of the moment to say, the, my time capsule music is the best music ever. That is the and there are pe That's there the are people that really, really are focused on that, and I have a problem with that because I. You have to be open. See the difference between our generation and the ones after, is that, hip hop became pop. Mm -hmm. When we when we start now, it it was not pop. So of course, when something becomes pop, a lot of it becomes fucking bubblegum bullshit. Mm -hmm. But hip hop is not dead at all. At all. There's so much out there. I mean, even just in my studio, I'm just I, I got my face crunched up so much because it's just so much talent. Mm -hmm. um, is there a difference to you between hip hop? I need to put the Malcolm X glasses on, bro. You gave one point. He <laughs> threw glasses on. I, I'm ready for it. Go ahead. <laughs> so no, I'm just saying. I think honestly, I'm gonna give you a point, right? Like, because when you say that you like Mob Deep, I consider that hip hop. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. But then I separated away from hip hop. Like I, I don't, I really never, I stop. I think New York is like hip hop down there. And the artists that's coming out of New York, they, they claim that hip hop, and they are the real hip hop, compared to Southern artists and then West Coast, I think they trying to stay with this gangster rap shit. And then down South is whatever it is that they do. So I think hip hop is kind of like sectional in a particular style of rap. Would you agree, Don, or no? I think that New York are the pioneers and the creators. But, and I would say, I would even say that it came from further back from African roots. It came uh, over, you know, I think that yeah, has mm -hmm. to be acknowledged for sure. But I think it's grown to be so big yeah. that it's really everything. And what I'm seeing now, especially with the the super young generation, is just smashing genres together. Yeah. Like there aren't any rules, and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. Everything might not be for me, but I, I'm okay with. I mean, you got to think where hip hop started from on on the sampling side. Mm -hmm. They were pulling samples from everything. Yeah. So really, to me, for for genres to kind of be smashed together, we're going back to our roots. Right. Um, but but yeah, no, hip hop is very much alive. It's just you have to look in the right places. Yeah. Um, I do agree that fundamentally music is regional, but I think with the murders of you know. Um, the, the internet, internet, you got, got people, people who can, can now tap, tap in. And, like, like for instance, yeah. I mean, like they in Africa right now, they have drill music in Africa, where they their biggest influences are Chicago drill music. Mm -hmm. So they're not even from that soil, but they're making the same type of music. So I don't think it's 
even, even centralizing where you're from, it's, it's kind of like you have that dialect no matter where you come from. from. Like, if, if you're from New York, you're going to have a stronger... Is drill hip-hop to you? Is drill hip-hop to me? I feel like hip-hop is ambiguous. It's... I don't, yeah, I feel like, like everything, everything could be encompassed in hip hop. Anything, like yeah. there's there's, there's country, country hip hop. Okay, that is that's true. No, I don't. Like, I, don't I don't understand because to me, hip hop focuses on being lyrical. Um, I think that they have way more emphasis and thinking out. It's much more conscious. Um, what they say isn't so focused on beats. See, when you get to other other type of like rap, all of it is rap. Mm -hmm. But hip hop is its own particular culture inside of rap. Well, and everybody, everybody that raps isn't participating in, in hip hop. hip -hop. I agree. And everybody that same way everybody that raps isn't participating in some gangster rap. Mm -hmm. And it's not just so sectional. Genre. It's not just New York. Because I would say Kendrick Lamar. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, people that's kind of like on that type of vibe. Damn near even like Rick Ross's type. Sh I don't know about Rick Ross being hip hop. But definitely Kendrick Lamar. I would definitely say Rick Ross is hip hop. I, yeah, he because he kind of got that type of vibe it seems like his rhymes are well thought out absolutely as opposed to somebody whose beat is just driving this song right you know what i'm saying beat centric versus yeah. lyric centric i think, I think beats, beats are more regional than artists are nowadays i, I see where you're going with that and i that's ag agree with it with with the concept because if if you're going back to the elements of hip hop mm. where we started that yeah. absolutely um you are absolutely right unfortunately i don't think that the younger generations are aware of those elements of hip hop so if we're going to i don't want to say like textbook but if we're going to the origins where there are elements and they mean something then um, I agree with you completely, and I actually think that we are missing out, and it's probably, you know, we have a lot of these conversations in the studio, yeah. <laughs> um, and unpopular opinion is I think we're actually missing out on the conscious rap, conscious hip-hop, because thinking as a kid what shaped me, they were talking about historical features. Yeah. I was the only seventh grader that wrote their book report on the autobiography of Malcolm X because they were talking about it in the music. So I'm like, I need to know right. this history. And this history was not being taught in school, obviously. Right. Right. So if we're going to, to that part of hip hop and that definition of hip hop, you're absolutely right. For sure. Whereas rap, yeah, it's production driven, period. So, so and that's more pop to me. So uh, I want to pose a question as well, and I want to tie it in the story as well, because uh, like you and Mo, y'all used to always go to all the DJ conferences and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I love so, music conferences. So uh, I wanted to ask, so with you going in, in, in to, to DJ conferences, are DJs kind of regional sounding? <laughs> <laughs> we we, we got to guess. Bro, I don't know. He would be on the show. It's, let it, yeah, just let it, it's, it's, let it it's his day around. in the spotlight. All right, so, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so with you going around to, like, different DJ conferences, first of all, like, when did that start? Um, they've been going on for, for a long time. No, it's I just, like, when did you get ingratiated into the culture of it? Um... That's a good question. 07, 08, oh, probably 08. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... But shoot, from the first time I went to my first music conference, I'm like, I love this. This is amazing. While some other people, like in, in the beginning, we would be able to get a lot of Dayton artists up there, especially when it was connected to the Hip Hop Awards because people were um, interested in that. Uh, but everybody, you know, half the room would be bored, and I'd be like, this is amazing right. this is all learning and then you have all these people in the same room to network with mm -hmm. it's opportunities you, you would never get otherwise um and still mm -hmm. still doing it. i mean we just went to the nerve djs conference last weekend I saw that. You had a bunch of nice pictures. yes and oh my cleveland family that's that's strong that is family they you know um 
we always spent Mo's birthday. Ohio Hip Hop Awards weekend was always the third weekend in September. Yeah. We always spent Mo's birthday there. Yeah. And the last two years, no, we missed one because of COVID. But I've been able to do that again mm -hmm. with the same people, the same, but that, you know, and it's far past music. It's literally family. So. so um, but so um, and back to the question of so do you think DJs are more regional sounding like is can you talk like between a, a DJ from the south compared to a DJ in the east? Or? Um, I think DJs a good DJ and in this case, you're you know especially at a conference they're likely to be good DJs. They're going to play what's going to get their crowd hype. So yeah, definitely. I mean, and it's been that way a long time. I can remember when Shell Shot came up from Baton Rouge and he brought us all kinds of music that we had never heard. Like Boosie, we had never heard Boosie. <laughs> yeah. And next thing you know, it was, that's all you, Wipe Me Down was all you ever heard. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think, I mean, I, I only know some, you know, some random opinions on it, but I think Southern DJs are quicker to break music. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think DJs play to the audience. It's their job to read the crowd right, right. and play what is going to get the party going. Right. So, um, me, I always draw parallels, right? So, like, you spoke of the conference and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and and then, you know, it's kind of like a tight-knit group, such as, like, you may not talk to this person the last time you went, but next time you come, you see him, like, yeah, I saw you last time, and you kind of... You know, so like, like conversation is I, I, I know this person this because I go to the battle rap events, Smith. Mm -hmm. I go to the battle <laughs> rap events, and it's, 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 it's kind of like a tight knit group as well. So, so like during, during COVID, you know, everybody had to like just go remote and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Which, not the same. Yeah, not, not the same, same at all. But what's it like having a community that you know that you belong to? Like, like it's, that. It's the best thing. Aside from being a parent, it's the best thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, because not only do you love and trust this person as a friend and you've built that, but you're passionate about the same things mm -hmm. yeah. and you can work together. You can m do events, you can create opportunities for artists. You, I mean, it's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. And you might not see that person for a year, but you pick it back up. Like it was yesterday. Right. Um, like, uh, Johnny O, the the founder of the Nerve DJs in Cleveland, um, year before last, when I went to see him, uh, well, no, I'm, I meant I went to the conference. Right. Right. <laughs> um, I hadn't seen him since Mo had passed. Mm. I, I think it had been three years at that point, but it's like a, not a day had passed. Right. Well, um, so, let's think about Mo in the sense of him being, because, because he also was a coach, coach at, at CJ as a um, wrestling. wrestling coach. Mm -hmm. What kind of coach that was he? Was he hard on him kind of? Oh, heck no. He, okay, so little known fact, I asked Mo one time whether he loved music more or coaching wrestling more, and he couldn't answer the question. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. Um, wrestling was something he did in high school and he coached, um, also after high school, he coached high school kids, yeah. um, at Patterson. So he, he loved, oh, he loved the sport. He, Mo didn't do anything halfway. So music, wrestling, he was, but he was an, a great coach. He, um, you know, cause of course he started, our, our son was eight when he started so we're talking about little guys mm -hmm. although they were coaching all the way up until uh junior high kids but um he was supportive he worked them hard mm -hmm. he worked them hard but um he talked them through their losses um he he encouraged them through the tough times um it, he was an amazing coach and and actually even in the studio he considered himself a coach wow. it, it said that bef before he got back into coaching wrestling with, with our kids um his mm. business co card said coach on it mm. yeah. producer coach yeah yeah, yeah. A producer is definitely a coach Absolutely. yes engineer is a coach for sure a, for sure. a good one is <laughs> so facts but um, yeah, so it, it came very natural to him. He had the patience of a saint, let me tell you. Mm -hmm.
I mean, the literal patience of a saint. Um, well, Dre Me said he'll show you once and then he ain't showing you again. Well, I guess maybe I should say with children. Because <laughs> as soon as I said it, I'm thinking he was no bullshit in the studio. Yeah. He, he literally, literally is somebody. <laughs> and there's somebody very, very close to me to this day to us. Um, sure, why not? E Man Jones, who, <laughs> who is my heart. My, I can't call him my kid, but I'll call him my nephew. And he, he's, he's been a huge support to me mm-hmm. and to our kids. And I hope that I've been a huge support to him as well. But, you know, as a teenager, most sent him out of the studio and said, Come back when you're ready. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, he did and look at him now um he you know it's just those are the beauty of the relationships but mo also was very very sarcastic like uh it was one post that uh, like you had made where you had said something like uh he was dry no like <laughs> i'm gonna tell you what a funny just to have me laughing years later of course so it was a status about talk, talking to each other while inside the same house and he responded on the post said uh, he, he said, said no, no, I don't get involved in none of that nonsense. It makes no sense to lay right here in bed and comment on your post. Laugh out loud. Because he was next to you commenting on the status sentence. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> we, we, had, we had a lot, a lot of laughs. Yeah. And it didn't take much. Mm-hmm. It could be the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell us about some of those funny, funny jokes y'all would have when you check through BBM. BBM yeah. and y'all in the same room together. You really can't say that. Oh, Lord. Actually... Well, when we first, you know, moved to the new studio and then I had my office and the, the control room was across the hall, he actually asked me to quit texting him <laughs> because, <laughs> because the, the particular artist maybe wasn't that great. And I had jokes, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Okay, I need you to stop now." <laughs> yeah, because he's laughing at the artist. He reads your text and laughing. Yeah, because evidently, at the lab, there was the window mm-hmm. in his face because he was sitting down. Yeah, sit right his face is it? Not a raise the bar. Yeah. He's like, "I'm kind. I need you to stop doing that." Right. <laughs> and I'm like, "Oops." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, being re- listening to people record music and engineering in particular, mm-hmm. man, you think you want to do that until you start doing it for mm-hmm. long enough, and then it just becomes just annoying. Like, like, like watching. watching I mean, you, you out of out of ten sessions, you probably get one that you is really like enjoying plus working. So maybe working ain't supposed to be fun all the time, but mm-mm. well, I have to say that one of the best parts of having the honor of doing it this long is that if you invest and work with that artist and by invest i mean just be invested in the session Mm -hmm. um there's growth i mean as long as the artist is willing to take um some coaching Mm -hmm. which mm, most are there is growth. There are artists that in the beginning, I was like, oh my God, why are you doing this? <laughs> so now that it's a whole different story. So there really is that potential for growth. Right. There really, really is. What y'all want to get into, because y'all kind of was one of the ones on the forefront of those help artists. Like I said before, at Santana's, they had, um, you know, where if you won a competition, then you can win free studio with Mo Beats. We all went down there signed the list because we broke. We're trying to get in and get it popping. And, you know what I mean? You compete. You go to the old gauntlet, and then you get a penny popular, a spot in Triple H magazine. It was, Ooh, it, throwback. It was a whole rollout for you. Like, it literally cost somebody $250, which you would get for free if you just went through the gauntlet. So, kind of like by proxy, if you was good, you was going to get there. A lot of people yeah. are products of that. We'll get to that a little later. But, um... Y'all end up venturing off doing something else with Big Hef, which I feel was mm-hmm. super uh, straightforward and, and like uh, in, in like business mind state of let's have an industry night where you bring in one person. Like I think y'all brought in Ray, Ray Cash was the first person y'all brought in there. I'm a pimp mm-hmm. in my own mind. Uh, we had Ray Cash in the studio 
and that was Dryden, mm -hmm. um, for a meet and greet. Um, and you're right, it was it was like a mixer. Mm -hmm. And all she had to do was show up. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then there were also, we did several um, industry tours yeah. with him where there were different stops. Well, they um, have, right? With mm -hmm. Big Half and the Ohio Hip Hop Awards. Now, yeah. um, the Ohio Hip Hop Awards had the annual tour. So, well, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Was it Big Half and y'all did it first, or was it? Well, first of all, you know, Big Half was part of the Ohio Hip Hop Awards. Okay. He's one of the four original founders. Okay. Um, they parted ways. Oh, she hood, y'all. Look, she, she got, got the, the car, car man. She, she got, got the car. car. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I've been, I've been running my mouth. My mouth is red, so. Um, so, yeah, he was one of the four original founders. Um, they parted ways late in the game. Late in the game. I can't remember exactly what year. Um, but Hef did his stuff on his own as well. So he was still doing... Matter of fact, the whole reason that they asked us to be, because we were Ohio Hip Hop Awards staff. Yes. We were the Dayton reps. And actually the reason they asked us to do that is because Hef had partnered with us at an industry night. It's at Therapy Cafe. That was a good event. It was. Um, so when that went so well, they approached us and said, hey, you know, would you like to be the, the Dayton reps? And I'm like, hell yeah, let's do this. Right. You know, because that was my forte. I mean, for Mo, it was like, okay, you handle all the business and I'll do my thing. And it worked perfectly. Right. Um, and that's what we did. So, it, so, so is that, that what the hashtag, hashtag that most are saying is working? Is, is that, that where it came from? I think so. Because um, to, to me, me it's, it's one puzzle, like you said, which kind of cops you're going through because uh, I really didn't know what you were speaking on because you don't tell all your business. Not I, like I, I don't. But, I don't. But, like, um, just talk, talk, talk to you off camera, camera, you said, like, you had a bunch of back surgery, stuff like that. And, um, mm -hmm. and um, I think you had said to the fact of um, that, that Mo being your lifeline through, through it all and now for good times. Um, so that kind of was uh, 2010, November, getting into where now y'all have your own. Studio, y'all are putting, putting things together. together. We, we, we were headed to that. Actually, um, Raise the Bar management started before the... We started that when I had my heart set on managing Dave Speed. Okay. <laughs> That's when that started. So that was a couple of years earlier. And then we carried the name to, um, to our new spot. Mm -hmm. And actually, I was the one that, that pushed for that because I just think that the raise the bar concept mm -hmm. is so powerful right now it gets mispronounced all the time it, you know whatever that, mm -hmm. that it is what it is you'll never find another one <laughs> right. but um you know the fact that we want to raise the bar we always want to increase the quality of everything we touch that's what it's all about that's right. what it's always been about so that's how that ended up there. If you was to run across somebody who was extremely talented, would you manage them? No. No? No. No. I would, um, yeah, I, I would not, no. <laughs> um, I wish that talent meant success. Mm. I wish it did. Yeah. There, but it doesn't. Now, I have come across several artists since I completely swore off um, traditional management. Now, I do um, artist development on, you know, a consultation basis. Yeah. But I have run across several artists who I absolutely love as an artist and in person. Gigi De Niro being one of them. Shout mm -hmm. out to my Shout sister. Out, yeah. Shout out, yeah. Um, who I said, look, I want to help you every way I can, but you don't need to sign any paperwork and I don't want anything in return. Yeah. I just want to help you succeed and, and that's that. Mm. I, I just feel like if I'm going to give my, my time and my effort to that, it, it's going to be a gift yeah. because, and, and this has nothing to do with Gigi because obviously she is doing her whole That's entire right. thing yeah. in Atlanta like I knew she would. But in other situations, you can invest so much. And I'm strictly speaking time and energy. Mm -hmm. And it can all go away in, in a heartbeat. Wow. Whether it's going to jail, 
you know, having a baby, having just a direction change in life. And you've, you've invested so much to go down the drain. Um, so what I do, I, I like to help people. I like to help the artists that, that I see really want to work. But I, I don't want anything for it, and I don't want the title. Mm-hmm. But hey, I, my artists know I got your back. Right. You text me anytime. I'm kind of bad at phone calls, but you text me anytime, and I, I got you. Uh, you know, I'm there to help. But would I manage? Hell no. So run us through the um, um, the 2012 uh, Hip Hop Award that you guys managed when it was um, at One Eye Jacks. It was the first time the, there. The showcase. Yeah, the mm-hmm. showcase. And and literally there's a picture of Mo over there like tweaking with the sound. Like, yeah. Like, he literally is like that type of genius. Like. Oh yeah, he he was amazing at live sound, and that was why we're such a power team on the events mm-hmm. because on the organizational side, that's all me. Mm-hmm. And then he would run the sound so that it would sound great. Um, and we brought in sound to every event. We always supplemented. We were never happy with the, the club system. We always. So it was just, you know, and we, we do those events and literally not see each other all night. Mm, yeah. <laughs> all night. And then, you know, you do the Waffle House recap after that. And then you pass right. out yeah, for yeah. about 12 hours after that. But, Yeah. He, he did all the sound. Even we would be at different conferences and something would be jacked up with the sound and, and you know, people we know would be like, hey, Mo, can you? And you just go do it on, on GP just mm-hmm. just because. That's love. So um, was Mo a person that really liked the accolades? Because, I mean, like, we all been in the studio, you see the couch, and you, you, you walk through that wall, you got all the stuff on the wall. Was he a person that kind of, like, was into the accolades, or he more or less, like, because he kind of comes off of, like, he'll come help you in on a credit board, but then the stuff on the wall is like, yeah, this is legendary. Um, he definitely wasn't ego-driven. I don't know if this is quite an answer, but. Um, but credits were very important to him. Mm-hmm. That's where he would get. He wanted his credits on that album right. artwork. That that is what really was important to him. Um, so as far as awards and that kind of thing, I, I can't say he really too much cared. He just wanted his credit. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it was something that was often overlooked and I don't think artists ever did it on purpose I think they just didn't know and now here we are in the digital age and there's not even album credits to look at hardly not the way they used to be right so but but yeah that was what was important to him those credits so um Eventually, y'all go to this. Um, it's called the Unheard, the documentary of Unseen, yeah, Unheard. Yeah, unseen, Unheard. Mm-hmm. Um, I never got a chance to watch the documentary, but it was about Sylvester and I. Sylvester Darnell shot it. Yep, and there was some incredible talent in that. Let me tell you. I mean, Coach Chronic. Coach Chronic, he was alright. Right. Yep, um, he was killing it. Uh, shoot, Cardi. Los, don't kill me. I can't remember the name he's going by now. But he, um, oh, you want to talk about lyricism. Um, Shetty was on there. Shetty. I mean, it, you know, and it's like, the still, these are all families because when you then come to the um, One Breath Still Breathing project that they're working on, I, I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, but a lot of those same people are on that. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And it's, it's a social justice protest. So I highly re- recommend check that out. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's a reunion of lyricists, let me tell you. Mm. I mean, Coach was on that one, too. Philip Nichols. Yeah, no, okay. <laughs> highly recommend, you know. I'm going to check it out. Like, yeah, um, but... It, it it very much had the same feel as that, although, of course, the one breath still breathing, you know, with, with everything that's been going on, well, forever, but especially lately with police brutality, it, it hits hard. Mm. It hits hard, so. But lyrically, I definitely, and Sylvester was also part of that. Maybe that's why I'm yeah. connecting those, but it definitely had a, a similar feel. Right. So, 
everybody check out one breath still breathing you won't regret it that's hard so um so, so Mo was featured, featured in, well, Mo and the studio, studio was featured on Dating CW when it was on for, The Reality Show, yeah, yes. The reality show. Yes, yes, yes. Where yes. Donald got a chance to meet his mentor. His mentor was Mo Beats. How was that experience for y'all? Brief. Was, was he, he into it? Was he got, I mean, like, how was Mo? Because, like, to me, I, I think Mo would be like, I don't care about that. Oh, no. Mo was, uh, he was always one to, to give. The valley up. He was always one to give a lot of advice. Mm -hmm. Like with him, whenever it was a session, okay, you, you might have been in there and there might have been, let's say, two hours of music making, mm -hmm. but there's going to be 45 minutes of conversation before and an hour <laughs> after or more. Mm -hmm. So he definitely was one to give advice on a lot of things, music and life wise. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's one of the things people tell me the most um, about him. But with the Valley, it, I mean, if I'm just being honest, it was it was very brief. Yeah. Like what you saw was about all that happened. <laughs> it wasn't a lot of editing to take out. Yeah. No, no, there wasn't, and there wasn't much contact after either. Oh, wow. um, unfortunately, yeah. Wow. So that's unfortunate. So um. Another, Another thing, thing that I saw that was legendary was y'all had the funk legend uh, Keith Harrison that came uh, the Grammy Award winner. He is such a, that that's one of the I think one of the many, but one of the big blessings that Mo had is that his mentors mm -hmm. were from that generation. They were the players. They were Keith right. Harrison is ninety is, years old right now. Really? Yeah. No. I would not have. You, gonna, <laughs> you want to bet? I got my bastards on you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, I, I, I believe you. It's just, I mean, this is a man that I, I just, you know, talked to a couple months ago, and I would never, you know. Wow, that's truly really amazing. Um, but oh, good people. Mm -hmm. And when, when he came and spoke at our networking event, you, he spoke about owning your music. Mm -hmm. And the, the stories he told, because for, for 30 years, he didn't own the rights to his music. Right. And at the time he did the event, he didn't yet, but I believe it was like two years later, he got the publishing back to his music. But, um, oh, he had all the advice. And this is legendary stuff. Yeah. Like, I think, I think the saddest part is the, the younger generation has no idea what their roots are. That's crazy because, because I, mean, I mean, like, like you'll, you'll say, say that, that name to a young person, person they'll know that he produced on. Uh, well, uh, he, he wrote, wrote on Ice Cube's album War and Peace Volume Two. Mm -hmm. He wrote for Criss Cross. He also wrote on on Snoop Dogg's album, mm -hmm. um, The Dog Father. He he's, yeah, he, he's he brought all the all the records in. Yeah, he's he, definitely amazing. But also the most humble and kind person you'll talk to. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the realist. So, I mean, I feel that we really need to take better advantage of these resources while we still have them. Absolutely. Um, so, so, to, to me, me um, he, he also, also paired with, with some, some of the best, best and bright when it came to other parts of uh, music and, and stuff like that. Like, uh, you, you know, know, just, just on, on the business side, side of things, things like uh, legendary, legendary Issa, Issa Walker, Walker with, with The Village. village. Mm, a little. A little, but okay. Um, all right. We'll, uh, we're we'll talking about Kwanzaa. Uh, I'm trying to think of another person out of here. Um, oh, oh, yeah. So, so uh, with, with Kevin Nash, uh, with, with, with them 102.9. Oh, yeah. And that, that's a, I, yeah. Bo, yeah, I, I big, big shout out mm -hmm. to Kevin. Always. He's, he was always a support to us. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, before, but also just as much after Mo was gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, you know, to this day, I haven't harassed him in a while. It's probably <laughs> overdue. But to this day, if I have any question or anything, I just shoot him the text, and he's, he's, you know, solid, solid guy. Like, I know that there is a lot of um, fuckery in music, yeah. but there are a lot of great people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I love it. I feel thankful to work with so many people that I enjoy just being around mm -hmm. and that they really want to work and grow. And I'm like, hey, anything I can say or do to help, that's my honor. Right. In 2015, it kind of seemed like everything was going so well. You got uh, you and the kids and Mo, y'all taking Christmas pictures together. Mm -hmm. um, you have, I mean, you're working with 
other artists such, such as like DJ uh, Willie Flight. Flight. Um, mm -hmm. You working with Katie Dollar? Our new Katie. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, that same year that that your vet was voted the most popular local celebrity. Um, the bulky house mixer. Yeah, that was in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. um, um, Mo talk about being soccer dad, you know what I'm saying? So, so oh, there was so much soccer. So, so in my head, I'm picturing Mo going to the studio, working on this, leaving from there, still going to be soccer dad. Um, you got to work with Shada K. Shout to Shada K. Uh, finesse, oh, always, yeah, always, um, always. And Tay Nick, Fleming, though, I also work with them. There was a project with both of them, yeah. It's, it's like, like 2015 from, from just looking from an on side perspective. It looked like a really good year. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. Um, and, you know, this is honestly something that I have not had the opportunity to talk about, but I I would like to. Okay. Um, Mo didn't want anybody to know he had cancer. Um, so in November, the day before Thanksgiving, November 2015, he was diagnosed. Mm. Um then we, we lost him in May of 2016. Um, during that time, he didn't stop doing anything. And the, the chemo was brutal. The, we, he was treated at the James Cancer Hospital, so we were in Columbus two or three times a week, every week. Um, but he was still in the studio working. He was still at every soccer game. Um, even to the point where the last soccer game, he had to take oxygen in a cane. Oh um, it was it was so bad that he had lost a bunch of weight and he lost his hair. And the client would walk in and ask for Mo. And he st he still he kept going. He never stopped. He said that this is what he loved to do, and if he stopped, he wasn't going to be able to cope. You know, mm -hmm. so he he definitely you know worked through it, but I had a friend ask recently a question, and I was really glad he asked it because I had never thought of it. He asked me, if Mo knew what was going to happen, would he have done things differently? And I can say with no doubt, he absolutely would not have. Mm. He wouldn't have done anything differently. He loved being a father. He loved working in the studio. He even threw some coaching in there. Um, he wouldn't have done anything differently. So, and looking back on it, you know, even though I didn't realize it, I feel like he was grooming me to step up and do what needed to be done so that his legacy continued. And here we are. I mean, wow. um, there were a lot of things that he wanted this location to grow into, and it's exactly what's happened. So I know he's over my shoulder. Yeah. I mean, there's no other explanation. You all night moving lights around and bringing. <laughs> well, you know, good. electronics are his thing. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah that's, that's a little something. Else, man. <laughs> well, on the subject of just people passing, like I, I'm really interested in that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've had close people pass away. My mom and my dad. Mm -hmm. You know, and just, just people who you love, man, and. I always feel like they come and they visit us in different ways, man, or just let us know that their presence is still around. Mm -hmm. So normally when we talk about, when I have guests that have been through something similar, losing a husband, a soulmate like that. Thank you. I'm gonna take a break. They feel like they want to come in and just let you know that you're not alone. So do you have any stories where um, you felt you just knew, like, yeah, this is this is Mo coming to give me this sign that he's still around, a dream or anything. Um, several, oh. several. Um, one of the hardest parts was he was in um, ICU for, um, gosh, it was just under two weeks, but it felt so much longer. Oh. And it got to the point where they wanted me to take him off life support. And that is not a decision I would want anybody to have to face. Yeah. Um, and 
Okay, so anybody that knew Mo knew he loved his smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> like, I used to tell him, if you're as faithful to me as your BlackBerry, or just the brand BlackBerry, oh, yeah. I am. Blessed. Yeah. So, um, but no, his he always used to say, it's, it's not a toy, it's a tool. And I'm like, I don't know, and you, you love that phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's livelihood, so... Um, so uh, they they wanted me to make that decision and I just I just couldn't um and what would happen was every time I would leave his room because I was in his room almost the whole time anytime I would leave his room and at this point he had been unconscious for 12 days so obviously we hadn't texted but his text conversation would jump to the top of my um like line of text like he was got a text, text from him but yeah no but it was text. exactly um every time i would leave the room but never if i was in the room and i knew it was him telling me i'm not there anymore um and i thank thankfully i ended up not having to make that decision he passed on his own actually he i said fine we'll do it at nine o'clock and he passed on his own on at seven and i just really thanked him for yeah. not Strong. making you know because oh, definitely yeah and and i and i was able to you know talk him through his final minutes it's it it sounds like a bad thing but it was very peaceful mm. now the time after wasn't so fun but you know that that it was it was very peaceful but yeah, he, he would, uh, you know, whenever anything weird happened with my phone, like to this day, on this phone, there's only one favorite, and I didn't make it the favorite, <laughs> and it's him. Hey, it's slick, damn. It's <laughs> most it's still slick, damn. What is it? Is his picture? It's it's his number. number. It it's his favorite. number. Yeah. That is left. <laughs> yeah. And then cool. he had so cool, he had a, fe a fellow wrestling coach who he got very, very close with, mm -hmm. who is so not tech savvy. Like, he can barely work his phone. And he came to me and he said, pictures of me and Mo keep popping up and they're old. I'm like, I told you Mo's messing with people's phones. Wow. <laughs> and it just fits him. Wow. All day. But I'm... Um, and but. <laughs> To just go along with what you're saying, and this go for everybody that's gonna ever watch this video. You guys, I do memorial t-shirts, okay? Mm -hmm. And I've been doing them for about 20 years now. And so when people come in here and they get shirts done and it's people that passed away, I started asking people the same question that I'm asking you. Mm -hmm. So now I've compiled all of this data over whether or not when people pass away, they still come and kick it with, their family and their friends that are close with them mm -hmm. and the answer is a resounding yes yep. i mean there's no doubt about it whatsoever yep. and if we was to all talk about this type of stuff and compare stories people kind of stay away from it because it makes you seem a little crazy when yeah. you say stuff like <laughs> yeah. that but all for everybody but when we get down and like we just talk individually about it and mm -hmm. we just being honest Man, everybody has a story that is so real. There's no doubt about it that the people who we lose, who we think we lose, we gain in another way. And I feel like definitely Mo's vibe is all in here tonight. Absolutely. We had a moth in this movie. <laughs> I ain't like never seen a moth in here. You guys, like, it was just, it was different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my mind went right there. And you got to be careful yep. because now I want to be offensive. Down, right. You know what I'm saying? But that right there was just all symbolic of a free flying name start with an M. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mo, Moth. I didn't go to come to wow. Wow. And Mo's are, not Mo's, Moth attracted to the light. Mm -hmm. And I just, I had all of that observation, like in that short little wow. time, to just feel like, yeah, bro came through mm -hmm. to chop it up and say, you know. I'm what up? I'm in here. You feel me, man? But yeah. back to you guys. So, you know. what was it like? I mean, 
not that part of it. The to, to see, see how, how much, much he's respected, respected. To, yeah. to to get the outpouring love, to have the multiple one or two point nine spots, to have the oh that was outpouring love. Yeah, that was unbelievable, and it meant everything to me. But it also what I couldn't ex- can't express my gratitude is for our kids because mm-hmm. their friends were hearing that. Right. Yeah, and that was so. I mean, they they were legendary. Yeah, they 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 were fifteen and eighteen, and you know that was, I mean, if you have to lose your dad, mm. which I don't wish on anybody, to to turn on the radio and and to hear that constantly, I just, you know, I I don't know how you can express enough gratitude for that. Right, um, like the one uh, brother from Dayton Daily News, name is uh, Kenya. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, he said Mo Beats is Dayton hip hop. Yeah, I agree. like he's the he glue is. to Dayton hip hop. He is. I, he agree. Is. I definitely agree. Mo Beats, 100%. DJ Skano. Yes, absolutely. Mo Beats, DJ Skano mm-hmm. is Dayton hip hop, man. Absolutely, no doubt about it, man. No doubt about it. They got that juice for sure. So uh, I want to speak on also uh, after that because I mean we, we don't want to stay in the dark place. We want to stay in the light place. Thank you, Mo, for showing us the culture mm-hmm. of the light. No um, they also created a scholarship in his honor, uh, which is the uh, Moses Mo Beats Montgomery Music Scholarship. Kayla mm-hmm. Hutchinson won the very first time. I don't know if they're still doing it, but to me, that was really dope. No, I, I think it's I think it's absolutely great. Um, that and um, he has a seat in the CJ Stadium where mm-hmm. the boys played soccer, That's dedicated great. to him. So. Mm-hmm. You got your music covered. You got the boys' sports, um, and and that's that was was you know those are the important things. Right. And after he was gone, every time you know, I sat in his seat, and it was just a you know, a little bit of comfort that he's still here. Mm. And I'm pretty know what pretty sure I know what he'd be yelling at the time because he was pretty animated. <laughs> So um, here on the Legendary People Podcast, we had this thing called the Butterfly Effect. The Butterfly Effect is something that either I've learned through the course of the interview, speaking with you, or something I found in my research that I found that was completely amazing, something that's truly legendary. Uh, we spoke about the Santana Day, and this is why he keep on trying to edit toward, toward Santana's, but I'm going to put it into a nice, beautiful capsule for you, right? Okay. So the fact that your your first time meeting Mo was at Santana, my first time meeting Mo at Santana, that's yeah, a parallel there to sure. begin with. Oh, At the point in time, I'm there trying to get my music off the ground, and I would mm-hmm. love for Mo Beats to mix and master my music. And my money right now is towards my kids. I ain't got money to be yeah. throwing out a dream when your kids is hungry. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, so during this time, right while I'm down there, I'm, I'm late to the party. You already have your top three stars is already there. You got J Vez, you got Jesus, you got uh, Jason DBKS, right? Yeah, shout mm-hmm. out so to my Jason, bro. So Jason. Wins the slot. Jason wins the Mo Beats time slot. So J- Jason goes down there. He makes a good impression with Mo. Well, oh, Jason well, was already, well, already a project like deep at that point. Yeah, but then I'm saying like he has that. He, he has a better relationship with Mo because he's already been there a couple of times. Plus, I want free studio time. Yeah, already got your settings at this point. You know what I mean? It's pl- plug and play. Let's let's get it popping. So th- then that turned into Jason going to the Ohio Hip Hop Awards and meeting Busy Bone, coming back to Mo Studio to do a song with him. Mm-hmm. That song is called "Got My Hustle Up." Mm. Well, yeah. The, Which, the, go ahead. It, have you heard the story of? It, it was because of Mo that Jason and I'm gonna butcher it if I tell the story. But, but try your best. Come yeah. on, let's get it. Uh, let's see what you got. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna butcher it. So my apologies to Jason. Also, on that note. <laughs> right. Um, we pra- drop his after this, <laughs> right? And on that note, prayers to Jason and his yeah. mom. Prayers to Jason. Oh, yeah, I love you, cuz love, love you, love you, love you. Yes, bro. yes. But okay, so let me go ahead and butcher this story so he can fix it later. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, Jason was recording a song and it had that line in it, "Got my hustle up." Mm-hmm. And I think he went out to smoke or something, and he came back in, and Mo had. I don't know if it was the intro, I think, at the Got My Hustle Up, Got, got, got My Hustle Up. Mm-hmm. And it went from there. Oh, wow. So Mo, Mo 
whole damn near chopped it up and put the little stutter exactly on it. Yeah. It, you know most stutter was, yeah. was, was yeah. legendary yeah. so that chopping <laughs> screw <laughs> so, chopping mo. so I, I i butchered the story jason's gonna have to fix it yeah. but um that that's basically yeah it but what, sure. what i also find is dope about it as well is that if you go to mo soundcloud mm-hmm the biggest record owner is a Jason record as well. It's a feature song with uh, Mar Mar Monroe. It, it, it's if you go to Mo's Beat SoundCloud, it's yeah. the top yeah, song on there. Yeah, I I don't think I don't think he kept up with that SoundCloud too much. But I say all that to say is like the butterfly effect is this is him putting out that positive seed to look into somebody who needed his help, needed his professional sound to be to where he is today. Yeah, and then. I saw a post about him um, from you where you were saying that that Jason is so dope because he inspires your son. So imagine your husband helping someone that later on helps his kids. Yeah. Well, you know, think about it. I took I took my son to now I didn't take him to the premiere, uh-huh. but I took him to Danbury uh-huh. to see the movie. Yeah. And he gets to see his de- the movie dedicated to him Absolutely. and he get even better than that he had it had his name on jason's sweatshirt mm-hmm. he he wore man that thing was coming up to here mm-hmm. on it he kept wearing <laughs> that wearing thing <laughs> i had to get him more mm-hmm. but you know to commemorate his dad like that i mean that's it's a it's a very dif- difficult situation so i was grateful for every piece of comfort that that my kids were given because you know you the worst thing in the world is to see your kids hurt and not be able to do anything about it Mm -hmm. um and also not being in the best shape yourself so all those extra you know things and then even when i took him to see the movie people would tell him you know your dad was a was a great person you you know Mm -hmm. and what you know better thing can you do yeah wow that's, man, this is so cool, bro. It is. Man, I'm telling you, man, our podcast and <laughs> kind of like just my observation of everything, I just continue to see um, it's shabby. I mean, it's kind of weird as this might sound. Like, I just feel increasingly blessed by the guests that we have on the show. Absolutely. Like, man, for you to be able to come in here and just chop it up with us about no, just being open, man. This is your husband. Right. You protecting him. Like, man, the only thing you want to do is make sure that his name is remembered in all the great ways that it deserves to be, man. And for you to come in here and just build with us like that, Don, like, yeah. I appreciate it. I, you know what I, I'm saying? I feel There's like. A lot of love, man. And we just, just nothing but respect and love for you, for Mo Beats. Absolutely. And, um, and your business. The yeah, I, and I, the kids. Feel, yeah. And the kids. I feel. And, and the kids. Hold on. Yeah. But, 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 Don, I got you. But, uh-huh. but what, what I was just going to say is, uh, just like to you, man, for you to make sure that that, because having your own business is not a walk in the park, yeah, it's not no. the glory that everybody thinks it is. It's actually for real work, and it can be frustrating. It can be tiring. You can under so a lot of times you can feel like, man, I'm done with this. I just want to go get a job and get a guaranteed paycheck. And you go through so many different things, but for you to stand up against all of that adversity and make sure that you guys, not just Mo's, because you you guys shared this passion together. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just Mo. You wanted to manage music. Mm-hmm. Mo was into music, and you guys came together and made it the power that it was, you feel me? Mm-hmm. And I think you did a beautiful job explaining that today. And for you to just keep it cooking, man, big tall salute to you, man. You know what I'm saying? I, Much love and respect. I, I appreciate it. For me, it's more of a privilege to still, co- the, people want to still hear the stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, now I'm sensitive, obviously, but I'm like, oh, have people forgotten? Mm-mm. You know, it's it's been, Oh, over five years now um I'm like it, people you know things move so fast people forget yeah. and and i get real sensitive like you better not forget <laughs> what mo did to yeah. make these things happen now right but to have the opportunity to to i mean that's why i, I do what i do for the studio that and it's what got me through yeah like 
I just there's a couple times I wanted to quit, but I'm like, no, we are not losing anything else. Right. Mm. And then as things started to improve, I would be having the worst shit day and then go and deal with these wonderful clients yeah. that give so much love and respect. And I'm like, why do I even deserve this? But it's mm. helping me get through the day. Mm. So, you know, it's it's a big blessing. And I'm, I think most proud because... He, when we moved in that spot, he said, I want to get the schedule to where we're always booking two to three weeks out. I want to do this. I want to do that. And we've done every single thing. Wow. Real we, 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 we've got a photographer and videographer on staff now. Yeah. Um, we're, we're branching out into a beat store on the website we're re redesigning now so I can help producers connect with our clients because there's such a need. Yeah. You know, we're, we're doing a blog as sort of a media outlet to cover events. You know, all the things that he wanted to do, we're doing. Man, I got an observation. Man, shout out to anybody who continues to provide after they have moved on and transitioned mm -hmm. to the next phase. Absolutely. Legacy. That is legacy, bro. Absolutely. Like, what he built... Is still cooking yes. right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he chose his queen mm -hmm. that would make sure that it, like, just all boss moves. Yes. And that is, that is, like, special, bro. It's iconic. It speaks to Mo, his genius. It, it speaks it to his genius, absolutely. Mo Beats gets mentioned on this podcast. Oh, my God. Just like Tony Ruby. Yep. And yes. just like Tommy Owens. Yep. Like, these Anonymous. are people that's a part of everybody's story. Yep. Mm -hmm. If they talk, if we talking rap, Mo we talking Mo Beats. Every time. Right, and we it was funny. I was I was watching uh, Mises episode, Mises. and when he started saying, "Well, this guy came backstage," I was like, "It was Mo." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you already knew. I I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. I mean, it still gave me chills when he said it, but I knew, and I had never heard that story. Mm. Yeah. So. Wow. Shout out Mo Beats. Happy, Mo birthday, birthday, yeah, because, Happy birthday, Yeah, because yeah, because I absolutely would never be here without him. Yeah. I would not be capable of this. He used to get so mad at me yeah. because, <laughs> especially in the beginning, because he didn't think that I appreciated my own talents enough. Wow. He always, and I still hear it in my head when I yeah. start to get doubt myself. You would always say, "Recognize your greatness." recognize your greatness and i'm like greatness isn't that going a little far now Man. but no i i still hear them when i start to doubt myself and think the hell am i still doing doing this i'm 45 <laughs> years old and right. you, you know you can't still continue to do this and you know i'm like well i hear more in my head i'm going well i'm doing it right. <laughs> so yeah. Me? So, but never. Genius never knows they're genius. Man. Yeah, they're great. Don't know they're great. Yeah, right. never in a million years a where natural, would I be thing. here without him ever. So, uh, um, I, I got a couple quick hits about some some of the people he uh, did uh, legendary records with. He did uh, MC Bree, uh, Too Short, Gucci Mane, Scarface, mm -hmm. Jim Jones, and of course the legendary Farside. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, you got anything else before we close out, man? Because, man, that's one of them dope Well, ones, and, oh, and, no. and to add, since oh, yeah, since he's man. since he's been gone, we've had uh, Young Blue in. Mm. We've had Sada Baby in. So we're, we're still yeah, trying to keep the tradition that. going. There you go. Talk your shit, dog. <laughs> Talk your shit, dog. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we have, look, we have a legacy to there continue. Mm -hmm. And there are still big things to come there we go I love, i'll go. just drop that little there's there's more big things i haven't mentioned to come sure. yet, so so um you'll drop some of your social medias and stuff like that uh shoot everything is uh facebook is raise the bar now spelling is always a problem there's no e in it r-a-z-d-a-b-a-r um on I, everything else is raise the bar sm um all of my social media is Dawn underscore raise the bar. It's it's all yeah. it's all what it is. Oh, raise the bar dot com. Yeah. Man, we're putting together them beats on raise the bar dot com. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, but look, man, go check out my brother. 
Karan Foster and my brother Shorty. 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 At Sheik's, man, they got the best breakfast in the city. They actually put up a picture of some of their breakfast today. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Oh I'm going to lick my phone screen. Yes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Man, go to Sheik's for breakfast, man, no matter what. Go to Sheik's for breakfast. And then for lunch, we want you to go to Agnes All Natural Grill, my brother North, North Jose. North. Man, he's putting it down without a frown down uh-huh. town. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so, got it. so go down there. They got jerk chicken and good oh old jerk bowls, oh, cabbage oh. and, and pineapple so bowls. Oh, oh, my God. They got fish sandwiches oh, and God. Chicken cheese steaks, all kind of legendary Ooh, food, the cocoa man. Bread on and you don't got to go all the way out to the mall anymore, man. You're right downtown on the Main Wimpy's and Wayne. Wimpy's, yeah. No, so Third I, and Wayne. Yeah. Third, third and so Wayne. Happy third and Wayne. That. Third and Wayne, man. Great food, man. I love it a whole lot, man. That's Agnes All Natural Grill. And then if you ever get injured, especially in a car wreck. You have to go to the hospital. Absolutely. Even if you don't feel like you're hurt that bad, go to the hospital anyway. Mm-hmm. And then call Michael Wright at 937 7477 and choice. make the right <laughs> choice, my brother Michael Wright. And like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell notification, and subscribe so you can get all the updates every time we drop a new video. By the way, we got a star-studded cast coming up this week. Absolutely. Tomorrow, mm. we got the for real goat, man. I ain't going to oh even lie, bro. Oh, my God. Man, we've been waiting for this interview Shut for a long God. time, at least a month. I done said Boogeyman name enough. He should have been already here. Bro, that. at least a month, bro. We got Marlon Shackelford oh coming on the God. show, bro. We got Shaq coming in, bro. Yeah, Shaq is like. Coincidentally. Huh? Sorry. What you, got? So what, you so got? what you got, Don? Mo coached his nephews. What? <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes, and Let's they were go. monsters, by the way, on the map. Man, monsters. The listen, that keeps on giving this Mo. Man. Bro, Shaq. Uh, okay, Mo coached his nephews, but Shaq, Shaq is a got, coach. Sha- Shaq's Shaq, coaching Shaq, everybody Shaq, else. Shaq just coached the whole city, man. Wait a minute, words, bro. And Shaq was coached by Coach Powell's brother. It's oh, brother. <laughs> see what happens here. We got legendary handshake. Yeah, yeah. legendary handshake. Man, we got Shaq. Coming yeah. on tomorrow, Shaq is real major. I yeah. can't wait for Big oh Brother to come God. in and drop these jewels. But beside him coming in and dropping jewels, he's going to tell us his life story and how he came became to be the Shaq that we see. Yeah. How he became yeah. to be the Shaq that we came to see. That we came to see. I just said see. <laughs> never let somebody else try to finish your raps. They destroy him, bro. Have you, if, never let nobody else read your raps. Yeah. All right. But Shaq. Tomorrow. And then Peerless Price. Peerless. NFL wide receiver man play with Michael Vick and Peyton Manning. He's going to be on the show Wednesday via Zoom on our Zoom line. Yep. And then we got Greg Yoloho, man, the king of rims, man. Yoloho wire wheels, big dog, real big dog, big dog. real big legend. Big stepper. Big legend, bro. And then we're going to cap it off Friday, Dollar Bill, bro. The on Dollar his birthday. Bill. The Dollar Bill. The Dollar on Bill. On his birthday, we bringing the strip king in <laughs> our studio <laughs> on his birthday. Yeah. That's real good. Yeah. That's major. That's legendary. Peanut <laughs> is going to actually get he, – I don't know if Dollar Bill is going to bring strippers in. I, mean, I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure he probably going to pull Man. with a couple of them. Bring a couple of strippers, bring bro. <laughs> Why not? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it'd be a good way. To, I mean, even a good way to to, to to promote his uh, industry night anyway. So facts. I mean, it'd be good big promotion. facts, big facts, and that'd you know be I mean? something different. I'll keep my hand on. We had Adams coming here on sing on the show. Mm-hmm. We had our other bro that sung with him. Um, uh, my man, uh, Derek Jeter. No, not Derek Jeter. Yeah. Leonard Jeter. Dust. D- no. Dustin Jeter. Is it Dustin? Dustin Jeter. Dustin Jeter sang. Both mm-hmm. of them came in here and did their thing. So if they can come in here and sing, then Dollar Bill, your stripper's going to strip. <laughs> All right? It's going down on our side of town, bro. P Dashes. What right. you got for me, King? Um, I'm here every Sunday, 8 o'clock p.m. I do Sell Stocks Not Dope. You can get my book for free on Amazon where I teach easy strategies on how you make money in the stock market in five easy steps. Um, I do, I do an introspective blog that's once a week every Sunday, and I do daily picks every single day. So, yes, sir. Need information with that? DM me. I got you. Don, close us out, man. What are we going to do? I, I, You know, I don't have a lot to say besides thank you. Yeah. Oh. Th- thank you to you both for, for keeping Mo's memory alive, for, you know, doing the best research I've ever seen in my whole entire <laughs> life. <laughs> um, but it's a real enjoyable time. I'm, I'm glad to be here. 
Man, no doubt. All right, y'all. We love everybody, man. See y'all tomorrow. Legendary people, legendary stories. Peace.